Yo, what up guys, it's Flark, and welcome back to the Coach Flarkness series. I am so excited to be bringing this one back. Uh, you guys have been requesting it for a long time, and here it is. If you're not familiar with what it is, it's just me going over my own gameplay or other DK's gameplay to see uh, what went super well, how you guys got to a win condition, what went not so well, and maybe how you lost a game, and of course, giving the audience at home a visual representation with gameplay so you can see these mistakes or incredible plays in real time and try and replicate the good and say, oh, I do that kind of thing too. I should probably stop doing that if it's one of the bad. But uh, you know, we're all stand to learn a lot from this, myself included. Of course, when I review my own gameplay, I can say, oh, that was a terrible play, or oh, hey, that was actually something good that my team did, um, and, uh, and just get us in the right shape, the state of mind for winning games. Uh, but if you want, to submit a VOD, this is really important, go to the description down below. There is a Discord link there. You're gonna go to the VOD review channel. You can't miss it. It says VOD hyphen review. Just get me a clip, however. YouTube uh, link, uh, that squad thing that people use. OBS can record stuff. Uh, just please give me a VOD and submit it there so I can keep having content for this channel. So important. Um, you know, all MMR, any MMR. It's good low MMR, medium MMR, high MMR. Uh, it's all good twos, threes, RBGs, Frost and Holy Blood if you have to, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all good content because, you know, people, sometimes it's easier for a 1500 player to learn from like a 1600 game to get to the next level instead of like a 2600 game. That might be a little out of their pay grade for right now. Not everybody can play this game all day, every day, right? So. Uh, please, link in the description below. Send me content. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And thank you, big thank you to the uh, players who submitted this content. But without further ado, let's get right into it. We've got uh, two players for this video. We've got a 1500 MMR, Windwalker DKR Shaman, and uh, later we've got an 1800 MMR game. So again, that should show you any MMR works. Um, first game. Our Shaman Windwalker DK, like I said, against Destro, DH, HPAL. Good matchup here. Uh, I uh, Very, very quick, I do not watch these games beforehand, right? It, it would be stupid, right? I want to react to this in real time. I don't want to micromanage every robotic imprecision of the game and just like script it out and say, okay, okay, this is all the things I could... No, no, no. It's got to be authentic reaction because some things are going to be very egregious and those are the things you can start working on instead of me uh, going frame by frame and seeing which frame could have been different. That's not going to provide any meaningful information. Of course, we're not going to play frame perfect for the entire game, but there's going to be some egregious mistakes or some egregious great plays, <laughs> right, that uh, that lead to a win or a loss. And that's what I'm more focused on, stuff I can react to in the moment. So let's get right into it. Of course, uh, against this, uh, it's going to be probably Destro kill target. Uh, last thing, I'm probably going to be looking at like kill target, um, defensive management, you know, peeling, grip chains, uh, your rotation, your burst window, if, how are you doing your rotation during that window? Those are the stuff I'll be uh, prioritizing. So we probably just go lock here, uh, chains them in the middle of the map and go. Um, very important to go lock, shut down everything he does. DH will never die. Uh, probably not the opener I'd be looking for here. It looks like we're, we're playing a little scared. Uh, this is probably the, I've played with 1500 MMR healers and they've let me die too many times. So now I'm scared of everything that looks at me. Uh, opener. <laughs> when uh, you don't want it, so against Deathstro Mage, this could be a solid opener. Uh, because, you know, you play a pillar and you grip a man. I don't really play that way, but that's a pretty safe way to play. It's probably useful against DH Deathstro. Absolutely not. The DH should just run in there. Uh, pop every cooldown. Uh, Chaos Nova, both of these guys together. And then, uh, you know, right up here, uh, the, the Windwalker Shaman. And then uh, the lock gets to just Infernal on top of that and just start free casting bolts. Uh, you don't really want to play back and give them the opener like that. You, you, yeah, it's a little too scared, right? You don't want to just push in. So uh, looks like we should get a change on the DH, then swap to the lock. Fester, oh, we might be going DH here. It's going to asphyxiate H, but yeah, they're going to set up a go on the DH, it looks like. Uh, good asphyxiate, right? You want to set up every go with an asphyxiate on the healer, but unfortunately you got imprisoned on it, so you probably have to pre-AMS. You want to be in the middle of the map here, AMS, go on lock, and then asphyxiate the healer while he double sweeps both. And that's another reason why you want to go lock, right? Because you limb them together, double sweep, and just go. Uh, and the sweep is even longer from the resolve. And you grip them back here. We're really going DH, huh? Okay, good pressure though. Got Bop and Dark. Is that Bop and Dark? There's zone, ROP. Okay, I don't know what... Oh, the ROP was probably trying to get the dark. No, it's kind of misplayed on the... Okay, so let's 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 dissect this. So the ROP makes no sense. Um, we should probably... Uh, did we APOC? Are we not APOC yet? Okay, good, good, good. This is great, this is great. Okay, so the the offensive rotation is all wrong here. So when you when you uh, A-bomb down, you get wound generation. I can see that's on the screen. Wow, this is a cluster right now. I, for the viewers at home, sorry you're looking at just nonsense right now, but I can, I can dissect this. So yes, yeah, so all your setup globals on Holy Blight, raise A-bomb, 
Unholy Frenzy for wounds, and then immediately APOC, and you can't APOC through BOP, I don't know if you knew that. And then you just spam dam, of course you probably run clawing into this matchup, so you can spam dam through the BOP, and you can spam damage at the lock when he kites you, because that's who you should be going. But uh, you can see, uh, we don't fester strike in the opener. So Unholy Frenzy into immediately APOC, because you have to spend the wounds as fast as possible. You got A-bomb generating wounds, and now you fester striking, and he's at six. He's just capped out on wounds, and nothing actually does any damage. You had a great opener, got him to half health. If you APOC right there, and then swap out, swap out to the lock, uh, when he darks, uh, and then, then the ROP is actually on the dark, so you don't accidentally pull him in. Uh, that is a huge output gain. So the, the biggest thing I could take away from this is one, make sure you've got, you, you know, APOC and every other offensive cooldown in the right order at the right time. So that's A-bomb down, then Unholy Frenzy. Uh, sorry, A-bomb down, then Unholy Blight, then Dark Transform, Unholy Frenzy, then APOC, and just spend, and never Festering Strike in your opener, right? Never. If you have zero wounds, you press Festering Strike, but you don't have zero wounds in your opener. Right now you got six, <laughs> right? So you never Festering Strike. Sorry for pausing forever there. Really, really important. Do not Fester Strike in the opener. You, you spend all your wounds. When you get to exactly zero, you press it once, and then you spend them immediately. You're trying to get as close to zero wounds as possible, not as close to six. All right, so, uh, so we're swapping over the H pal here, it looks like, or he just gets limbed in. So, so we're lining here. Yeah, playing this pretty scared. Um, the, there's literally not been a single wound spent on the DH for that entire burst, so of course he didn't take any damage. I mean, he took some damage from the, D, the Windwalker hitting him hard in the beginning, but after that, the entire go was down. And it's like we're going to run here. So yeah, swap to the lock. Perfect. Chains him here. That's Fist of Fury. Earth Ellie is down. Probably kick off Resolve and stun him. Windwalker's taking so much damage because those bolts went off. There's a Freedom. I see a bomb in the middle of the map. Like actually, no matter whose bomb this is, it is a bad bomb. I, what is this doing here? I have no idea. I actually don't know whose bomb it is, but it's just stupid regardless. Um, Hodge on the Shaman, so maybe it's okay to line here. We get blinded. Uh, Windwalker should probably dip. And we are hitting the pet now. We could probably finish it, actually. It's still, Locke is probably a better target than the pet. He's just gonna fail Dom and spend this out. Please finish! Let's go back. Okay, we got it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so we're just, uh, we're playing scarce. So the, the DK is not the target. So he should just be sitting on top of the lock, stopping everything he does and keeping the pressure up. So far, again, we haven't even spent a wound on our kill target and uh, we have no counter pressure at all. So there's just, the DH led Destro is just winning the game for free. Uh, there's Freedom, DH backpedals slowly across the middle of the map, huge. Uh, we Karma for no reason there, it's no cooldowns. Uh, kick the bolt, there we go, kick the bolt, yes. And now we swap to the lock, casting circle, probably grip him out of this. Uh, Chains on the H-Bell for no reason, he's not doing anything at all. Not going in for Hodge, already pressed. Uh, now we're lining again. Okay, so not on you. Oh, yeah, see, we grip him out of the grip him out of the casting circle to this edge right here and just start hammering him. They're not on you, so you don't play pillar here, right? The, this is again. I, I, I think I diagnosed this perfectly in the beginning of the game. Uh, this is my 1550 MMR healers let me die every game. So now I'm terrified of any single player on the enemy team. You're you're not kill target. You have not been touched from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. You have fleshcraft AMS. You still haven't even pressed APOC, right? You have no fear. Sit on the lock from start to finish. Fine, If uh, well, I'll stop saying that since I can't tell you in hindsight, I can't go back in time and start telling you so. Sit on the DH from start to finish if that's what your guys' strat was, but don't come off of him like this. You're not getting touched. You need counter pressure of some sort and Unholy has a ton of sustain. You're, you're Windwalker DK, so sure, your burst windows are huge, but you're Unholy, which means you're not only trying to win every two minutes. That's what makes Frost so bad. Right, Frost is so bad because he can only win every two minutes, but Unholy can win all the time. And, but in order to do that, you have to do your max rotation. You have not spent a wound on the DH, I don't think yet. <laughs> That's probably an exaggeration, but you know what I mean. Uh, Dark Pack there for nothing, on nothing. I, oh no, he sweeps, but you were still behind a pillar. So a Dark Pack did effectively nothing. So now would be a great swap to the lock. There's a Hex, we chained him for no reason. Um, probably just chains lock and swap to him here. But if again, if we're going DH, just chains DH and then asphyxiate uh, the healer and sweep the DH right now would be a huge go. Uh, Locke is getting free bolts off on the Windwalker. Can't even imagine why that would be. Um, so now he's at 20%. Uh, freedom, we miss kick on fear. Uh, Divine Fave from the Age Pal on no pressure at all. There's a fear, maybe a Lich Bornet. I don't know if we have. Uh, Dark Transform is here. You got the Asphyx. This is our first time for a go, baby. This is it. Dark Transform. Huge damn. I thought I Death Coil Brock. Huge pressure. Got the limbs. We've got the slappy hands. It's a good go. We asphyxiated H pal into a para with pressure on the DH, but this is going to show you exactly why you don't go DH, right? Because he's not going to die. He's blur. He's going to be completely fine. Uh, H pal came in, but that was divine favage or aura mastery cast holy light. I don't think you can get it. Uh, no IBF for this. There's zone. DH backpedal slowly into the middle of the map again, aggressively trying to lose the game. Fear quarter. Uh, still, he could finish DH. This honestly. 
It wasn't a bad go. It wasn't a bad go. This is way better than the other one. Wounds were being spent. Pressure was out there. Um, the asphyxiate on the healer was perfect. Didn't get a prison on that this time as well. Um, let's see. We could probably actually finish him off with a kick on the H-Bell's cast, right? He has to cast. We No wings for the H-Bell, right? No wings for the H-Bell. Um, no trinket. All right, so actually just any CC effect. I don't think you have Para and that's, he's on Hex DR. But a kick on the H-Bell wins the game. Oh my God, kick, please. Unfortunately, you are in fact 65 years old. I know we've all been here. This is a, it's a terrible situation. Looks like the DH uh, gets stopped by that. I'm not sure if you had a demon proc as well, so maybe you wouldn't have killed, but yes, generally you want to kick the cast as they are going and not after they complete. Uh, freedom on the DH should be okay. Uh, that's a sap on you. You're aligning for no reason again. You haven't been targeted from start to finish the game. So you play out, kill the lock, play out, kill the lock, right? You do not need to be back here. Uh, change the DH, change the lock, change the DH, change the lock. Okay, we grip, okay, well, grip the H-Pal and chains him and asphyxiate him on no damage at all. All right, so we, <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure we just gripped the H-Pal to where he wanted to go, changed him for no reason, and asphyxiated him on no damage. So uh, it's not ideal. We're gonna get uh, some huge pressure now with the Infernal onto the Windwalker. He's gonna have to kite. There's the bomb. Oh my God, dude, the bomb is exactly there again for no reason. Somebody's trying to kill the agriculture in that spot dude nobody that that bomb has been exactly there twice for no reason i have no idea i have no i don't even know whose bomb it is but they're really really mad at that spot in the map okay you're dead by the way windwalker is taking heavy damage he's gonna have to port then the shaman will probably die it's dark soul bolts we're still not going lock the dk is not left pillar uh for the first 14 minutes of this game uh, <laughs> we killed a pet back there at least there's bubble bu bu bubble and darkness both teams are aggressively trying to lose the game they had all the pressure in the world they bubble darkness on <laughs> on nothing at all uh dh slowly backpedals to a ring of peace windwalker's in trouble shaman has no cooldown so he's gonna die just needs to play pillar though and he should be okay he's gonna run into the middle of the map get bolted once twice dead yeah dead okay <laughs> right okay good good no it's 15 50 mmr completely understand i play this game 24 hours a day you probably play it 24 minutes right this is not this is not the end of the world Unfortunately, this is not how this game's supposed to go. <laughs> HPAL was almost doomed, not even sure how. Uh, there was no pressure from your team, the wrong target the entire game. HPAL bubble darks, not punished, right? Uh, just go lock, just go lock and please. Your health bar goes from 76K to 74K the entire game. There's nothing to fear. Yes, okay, they can swap you, but if they're never touching you, you should have AMS, IBF or Trinket or at least one of the three. Um, Flesh crafts, death strikes, you shouldn't die and they're never touching you. So you have to stay out. The pillar is not the only place for a DK. In fact, it's almost never a place for a DK. Uh, peel for your teammates better by by, by playing aggressively. Your chains, chains were okay early game. I think you got a little flustered. They only started going on H-Pow, lock and DH kind of ran freely around the map. Freedom exists, I understand it. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> and then it drops. And there's other targets. You can press chains on the other target and swap the chains back to the uh, the target after freedom goes down. Uh, you paid a little bit too much attention to the H-Pow, like the grip, the, 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 the chains on him, the asphyxiate on nothing. Uh, you really just, you want to run down the lock, grinder and purge bop, purge freedom. Setup goes, limb, double sweep, swap to the DH in the sweep if the lock ports, then swap right back to the lock, grip him into the middle of the map, grip him away from his port, um, and play in. And you, you'll, if you wound the H-Pal doing whatever this was, the H-Pal would have been negative three mana 40 seconds into the game, right? So lock, all in, purge, stop casts. You can, you can kick uh, or you can asphyxiate. Uh, you can kick off resolve and asphyxiate or you can pet stun off resolve and kick. You have so many options. I know resolve is annoying, but they uh, they made it very doable to get some long as fix on there if you just kick as fix. And uh, yeah, you're gonna have to go through bops, but you got purge on your team and earth Ellie. You have so much output for this death show. He's never gonna live. Um, if you want to swap to the H pal, it's actually good. I think you tried to do that in the beginning of the game, but uh, yeah, it's 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 not DH. Um, it's it's death show. So playing a little too scared. Uh, just some misses on the uh uh the, the the peeling at the end the beginning was pretty good um and the rotation at the beginning was a mess unfortunately again no no festers in the opener uh all those cooldowns out apoc and just start spending and again uh if you can't you can't score it strike into bop you can't apoc um but uh if you want to swap on that it's really good but you just got to actually start using those spenders right it was kind of like just limb damage it was limb damage and running around it wasn't actually the unholy rotation so well unfortunately it's hard to tell on meters is there meters on this screen uh meters anywhere you guys see it i, I don't see oh my god bottom left corner baby um 
So yeah, it's actually so hard to not do damage as unholy. The meters are not gonna tell the whole story. So it's good that you came to me because if you're just looking at meters, I mean, the Destro did a lot of damage. It's, it's 3K DPS, which is pretty low, but like the actual output is like, it's like there, but that's because unholy just oozes so much. You got your pets, uh, a bomb limb damage, um, outbreak, right? You've got all these sources of damage. So it's hard not to be high on this meter, but that's not kill pressure, right? The kill pressure comes from that spender, 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 like five per second with all your haste during and holy assault and you're just nukifying them. So, uh, yes, there you go. Uh, I hope that helps in some way. Uh, I still have no idea who hates this part of the landscape so much. Two bombs there. That's very bizarre, but, uh, you know, 1550 MMR, totally get it. Uh, there's sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm sure a Destro Lock is one shot uh, with, you know, no ground or no shear from your Shaman, like, one too many times. And it, playing a little scared, but that won't get you any dubs. The best defense is a good offense, so make it happen. Moving on to uh, Zectol. Uh, about 1800 MMR, uh, Fury TSG. We're gonna take a look at this one. So we grip, run in here. Let's see, another lock. Oh, yeah, they're popular. Go lock. Um, okay, good. We're going lock. Chains on him in the gate. This is actually perfect positioning right off the bat. So uh, every offensive cooldown from our team should be pressed here. And it looks like it's going to because they are stuck in the room. And that means they're stuck on their port. It's gonna have to try and get a gateway down. Then you just grip his gateway and then he's just right on top of his port. And it's a terrible port because it's not even gonna get line of sight. And you just ram ranch him. Um, Okay, so that's pot packed and bop. Is this another Arsh Shaman? Yes, it is. So just purge the bop, grip him here. Grip, 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 grip. Okay, so yeah, so you don't want to run to the lock on his gateway. You actually want to grip him back. Let me make sure you have this. Yeah, that's grip, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny going through all everybody's UIs and such. Um, and you should just want to grip him back to his port. Don't chase his gateway. Uh, even though your Fury Warrior has mobility, you don't want to grip it. He was actually bopped, so it wouldn't have given him the charge rate anyway. You just want to grip him back right next to his port, play on his port, and then he can't go anywhere. He's stuck in this location. Here, let me use my mouse. So he's stuck right up here in this location. And he's just, that's where he is. Blah, blah, blah. And he just can't move, just gets hammered. Uh, there's a small sack. Good pressure here though. Great damage, good rotation. Uh, rally two, keep chains on him. Okay, really good. He's doing everything I asked for. <laughs> Spamming spenders, horrify here. Don't think you have trinket, wouldn't have been worth anyway. Zone is really good soon. Soul Rot, it's probably Zone. Dark Soul, probably Zone. Gets it instantly. Great play. Great play, honestly. Uh, Chaos Bolt. Eh, but it's all zoned. I mean, this is just great. Uh, the uh, Asphyxiate there gets the Resolve off. We Kick Bolt now. Gets it. Uh, keep the pressure going. Never, never come off. Purge the Freedom, hopefully, from the Shaman. Keep the pressure going right now. You're going to kill. Bop, purge it off Insta. You're gonna kill here. This is actually a really great play. So again, I, I agree with uh, grip away from the gateway in the opener. I think you guys would have gotten even more pressure, but you're staying out. Zone perfectly rotated into Dark Soul Soul Rot, right? So they get no counter pressure there, which allows you to uh, uh, keep some cooldowns out of your Shaman and just stay aggressive. And that's it. Yes, good. Oh my God, perfect representation of everything I said from the first game. This is how you kill a lock team, right? You stop them from playing the game. You sit on them from start to finish. Yeah, they have bops, purge it. Yeah, they have bops, line it for a second, but then you come right back out and you see, keep killing him. Then two bops are gone. Now they can't do anything, right? This is the second bop, it's already gone. He's gonna link here. I'm not sure it's that useful. I don't think you were under that much pressure, but maybe, you know, health bars up there. Maybe I'll pay more attention. There's a good chains. Uh, this guy's going to die. They have no cooldowns at all. We already saw Sack in both bops. So you just stay on him from start to fin. Uh, Pre-MS probably CC here because you know you have kill. Grip him back into the middle if you can DA for it. No, you don't have. 32, nice grip, perfect grip. Uh, so you just keep chains on him here. Spam that death coil. You've got him, it's over. Yeah, it's great. It's great, um, great rotation, perfect zone, good output. Um, great job staying on top of them. Weird link from the Shaman unless Warrior dipped low and I didn't see it. Um, uh, great use of like, see, look at this. Look at this, DRs on the h -bound. You got Trinket out of him already. You got Bubble out of him already. Fear and Hex onto him. It's good CC. You can asphyxiate into Hex. You can uh, fear into Hex. You can, uh, you can do so much. You can just stop everything the lock does and just let them CC the uh, healer, which is kind of what it looked like you did. Uh, lock didn't really play the game. You zoned his only offensive pressure and you stopped everything they did. So that's actually, that was a great game. It was a great game. Again, just grip the uh, lock back to his support and that'll be even easier for you guys, but you've just played it well. Okay, oh, the classic. Frost Mage, I'll, I'll do like two more games. I'll do like two more games. Uh, this is really fun. Frost Mage Destroy Holy Priest. Uh, is a classic. Right, you guys have probably queued into this more times than you can count. They both do unlimited damage. One of them has PI, you can purge it though. Um, gonna be hard to do that when they're both doing 60k DPS. Uh, they wanna go mage. 
It's good. Okay, so there's two ways to handle this, and both are okay, I think. Uh, Mage is the shut them down entirely. They don't play the game. Uh, but Destro gets to play a lot, and he can one-shot you. Or, and you have to go through two blocks, so you, you're not winning opener, but you shut down everything the Mage does. Or you go lock. You don't get to shut down everything he does, because lock does more damage when being targeted than Mage. But you can kill opener, because you don't have to go through two blocks. Uh, so you can either hide, go lock, all in, try and one-shot him, hide, all in, go lock, and one-shot him. Or you can play sustain, stay in the entire time and go Frost Mage, right? Because when you go Frost Mage with Fury Warrior and Holy, he should not play the game. Like he shouldn't. So it's just the Destro trying to solo you, which he can do, of course. That, that's why there's two schools of thought for it. Looks like they're going to go for Mage. He should A-bomb Dart. Okay. So you A-bomb farther away, right? You A-bomb back here. Let me use my mouse. I'm not stupid. I'm not an old man pointing at the screen, <laughs> right? Uh, you way bomb way back here. It's a way far, farther range than that. You pull them out instantly. You can demount and then chains. Chains is also 30 yard range and you get the A-bomb chains. If that's how you want to play it. I'm not saying like this is the most important thing in the universe, but if you want to play to A-bomb out mage and go mage, you just farther back, A-bomb them out and pull them out. Uh, so that's Icy Veins from Mage already. Ooh, we got to get straight to him. That's a kill target. Um, Just sets him on the back foot. You get to pull out either way, but I mean, you, maybe he, you don't if he just actually moves because you're a little late on it. And uh, it just sets him on the back foot if you A-bomb early. Um, it's Guardian already. Oh, we're going to do a disgusting go here. Woo! Oh, do we win opener? Okay, Ray, negative. Oh, he has to block in it. That's huge. Okay, so after the first thing, the tiny nitpick, we turn into absolutely catastrophically perfect play and get uh, every single cooldown on the enemy team. This is great. Lim, we're directly on top of him. Looks like we AMS. You can see that AMS aggressively for the 47 seconds. It's on CD for 47 seconds, which means we used it in the opener to keep CC off of us. And look what we were rewarded with. Block, Guardian. Or block, Ray. Block, Ray, Guardian. Block, Ray, Guardian. Incredible. The mage comes out of block. I like nothing health. Fury Warrior stays on him. Keep chains on the mage. There's a limb. Chains the mage. 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 Okay, we could probably use some of that. Perfect zone, though. Ooh, perfect zone, though. All right, so we once again land the zone on the Infernal proc. Both games that's happened, and uh, they're not going to get any pressure. The uh, the lock mage is not going to get any pre pressure, right? Because, like I said, a mage that you're sitting on does nothing. Look at his damage, bottom right corner doing nothing down here. And the lock is getting zoned on all of his cooldowns. So there's an ice wall down and it doesn't matter. It's a great zone, great zone. Now they should have so much pressure here. Uh, come out and dip out of the zone a little bit. You can maybe grip him back in, don't think you have. Keeping chains on him, that's a lot better. Kicked off, uh, kicked him on Blizzard. Now you should probably kick it off and stun him because he blinked already. You don't have stun for 21. It's something to look for. You don't have it here. So there's nothing you could have done. You're not making a misplay in any way. But if, you, if he kicks him on Frost, then you kick off Resolve and then stun him. You get him in a five second stun after he blinks like that. that that's another block right there. Of course, again, you don't have a 68 here. It's just something to look for. Uh, chains, chains lock, chains mage, way important. You should, probably should have gripped that blink, by the way, into Africa, right? Right right. when you guys were back here, it's the priest is over here. It's really good to just grip him back, right? Keep chains on the mage, though. We're just getting away from you. Definitely need chains here. That's an infernal proc. Warrior's taking heavy damage. I don't think you die. It's a good link. Chains, chains, chains the mage, chains the mage. We're having a brain aneurysm, unfortunately. Chains the mage, chains the mage. Oh, he's just walking freely across the map. This guy went from here to there to here <laughs> with grip and chains available. A little bit of a miss there. Uh, chains? Okay, there it is. <laughs> All right, so that that that's unfortunate. We lost a lot of pressure and got, got him... Uh, they got pressure because he was able to move so freely. So remember, just have that up. It's a Deathborn proc. It's not going to do anything. That's Ray. He might, might have to block in it. It's not negative. You shouldn't block here. It's not negative. It's not negative. It's, oh, I could coach this guy too. I could coach the Mage Lock team next. Yo, he should send me some thoughts. That is not a negative Ray. He blocked for no reason. He just got scared. Yeah, that was a positive Ray. See, dude, it's topped. He's topped, man. He threw out block on absolutely nothing. Oh, JK Global. What are you doing, man? That was the worst block of his life. All right, so he has nothing now. So you win off of Mage the next day, bomb Lemga. Uh, you can see Unholy Frenzy in 10. Uh, what else? Where's his mm, cooldowns? Can you see them? APOC in 52, Lim in 32. So you win in Lim. 32 seconds, you win the game. There's an A-bomb down in the Mage. Of course, he immediately goes to the wrong target because he's a dumb fat man. It's all good. Um, Death Coil spent. I mean, he's just going to die. Now he has no Guardian before your Lim. Lim kills him so guaranteed. At this point, it's just chains. Right, at this point, it's just chains. Live. Uh, what I would be doing if I was playing DK right now, okay, is I would be saying, ah, just live. I have, I have Lim in 18 seconds. He pressed every cooldown in the wrong time. <laughs> live right now. Right, you just kick, kick Frost. Zone when he comes up. Uh, stop everything the Mage does. And press Death Strike. Everybody lives and you win in 30 seconds, 20 seconds. You might actually win before that. 
James probably keeps make sure that's on him. He just guys dies anyway. And then Lim comes up, so he would have died anyway after that too. Fury always doing unlimited dam. Um, so some really good, some bad, some terrible from the other team. Uh, Frost Mage Destro shouldn't be that difficult to play, but they they made some some really questionable decisions. Uh, the enemy team did. Um, the gear uptime would have been a lot better. Oh, here's a here's a tool, Clawing Shadows. Clawing Shadows into this, so you can see. Yeah, your Fury Warrior actually ended up being a top damn despite being targeted. Fury Warrior does do a lot of damage. Unholy does more. Yeah, no doubt about it. Unholy is the highest DPS spec in the game right now, besides maybe a free casting Frost Mage. But just from raw, unpeelable pressure, nothing out damages Unholy. Now, out, uh, damage is not like damage is not like like the only metric. Like, believe me, I get it. Like, some people are sitting there and they're like, "What wow, damage meters don't matter." Like, and, and sometimes you're right, and sometimes you're wrong. And you're right when you say a rogue mage that does less damage can still beat a TSG that does more damage than the Rogue Mage, right? Because that's, that's they're killing in setups. But if you're playing an output comp, yeah, yeah, the damage output matters as much as boss. And you did a good amount of damage and your Fury did a great amount of damage. So props to him. Uh, some things that will that will get you above him, Clawing Shadows into Frost Mage and actually pretty much everything. I gotta update my video. My, 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 my Glad video that covered the Unholy setup is literally pixel perfect everything that I play, except I did not give the nod to Clawing and I found out a week after, it's like the greatest thing ever. So Clawing Shadows, especially into Mage, you can't Kaichu as well. And um, I mean, if you keep Chains on him, your uptime will be higher and uh, your output will be a little higher. I, I can't, it's gonna be hard for your UI, uh, is so much different. It's hard for me to like go global for global to see if there's a way that we can crank it. Again, 700k damage is not small, but I bet with per perfect play and clawing shadows, you're right here. You're right here, like 950. So uh, again, just don't let the chains drop so much. Maybe grip a, uh, a blink or two that we missed and uh, otherwise just great play. The zones are perfect though. Zones are perfect. One more game. Zones are really good. Defensive play is really good. Uh, just a few things to, to, to add here and there. Clawing Shadows will change a lot. What do we got? Fury Marksman, dude. Oh my God, you're gonna go one shot. They're gonna go DK. They're gonna one shot in the opener. They're gonna go you. You have to press every defensive. You have to go Fury and race them and you have to press every defensive in the opener. Um, both teams will be dying the entire game, but you guys should be able to go first because you have double MS uh, with the Fury high MS that he'll have eight stack the entire game and your MS. The Holy Priest will just run out of tools. Peck kick the Holy Priest, grip him in maybe. Uh, asphyxia in the Holy Priest, Stormbolt on the Fury Warrior. Uh, purge a couple times, Earth Ellie down, you just one-shot the Fury Warrior. You have to press every defensive in the beginning though. See if that happens. Uh, Mark's Fury is just a one-shot comp, right? And DK is so susceptible to this. If you press IBF and Death Strike uh, three times, though, you should live. You should live. Because they're going to burst you, which means you're healing despite having to go through two Mortal Strikes. Should still be okay. But... All right, so you A-bomb here, chains him right in the middle of the map. Chains, 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 chains. A little late. Charge. Uh, IBF, 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 IBF. You're gonna die. If you don't press, you're gonna die. It's disarm, trinket. Nice, death strike. Yeah, you're gonna die, yeah. Whoa, and look at him, look, he's so dead. Stormbull, he got trinket guardian at three health if he would've been alive. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, so that's a, that's a tragic one. We're checking death recap. I mean, just, yeah, just IBF and death strike and you're fine. The three recap has nothing to do with it. Yeah, 26 game shot. Yeah, people hit hard in Shadowlands season three. This is brand new information. <laughs> yeah, yeah, through IBF. Oh, oh he's, he deleted it. That is not true. You did not. <laughs> you did not IBF, buddy. That is not true. Good delete on that, buddy. You almost lied to your teammates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so yes, I, I. Wow, I feel I feel like a prophet on this one. So yes. It was a race. You saw the Fury Warrior, despite you not getting to hit him one time, uh, got to 30%, had to Trinket Guardian at the, the very first second. Uh, 100 insane damage, but I, I know it's terrifying, but you could have actually lived. Uh, so you just chains first globe, demounting right there. So he doesn't get to free uh, free run at you and you get two globals, two setup globals while he's running in, right? So chains first globe right here, raise A-bomb, unholy, uh, unholy Blight, uh, Dark Transform, now he probably charges in since he's a little farther with the chains. Um, then Unholy Frenzy, APOC, uh, maybe Asphyxiate Healer then, and you guys actually win that race. IBF uh, first globe and uh, Death Strike three times and you're completely fine. The trigger on the Disarm was completely correct. And you got a couple Death Strikes in, you just didn't IBF first globe and you didn't get counter pressure. So uh, yeah, that's brutal. Shadowlands season three, they do a lot of damage. I Believe me, I understand. That's why I knew. That's why I knew this was gonna kill you because I've been there, buddy, so.
experience. It's it's huge. Um, but yes, that was uh, that was rough. But your first two games so good. Your defensive play was so good. But against those melee cleaves, they are or those physical damage rather like marks and fury. They're going to one shot you. You don't have AMS for anything. So you just have to press everything instantly and win the race. And now you have that info. Uh, this is a great game. So the defensive play in the first two really good. Thank you guys so much for giving me this content. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if the style works for you, if it doesn't, just leave me comments below. If you guys want to see more of this, I will be doing higher MMR, lower MMR, and I'm going to be doing this uh, pretty much, uh, you know, twice, three times a week. So if you guys really like it, uh, just let me know. And if there's anything I can improve on, please tell me and I will read them. You guys know I've been reading those comments. So thank you guys so much uh, for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.